Welcome to Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. In the next half hour, you'll obtain insights and tools to transform your life using the biblical principles found in the 12-step program. We believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience because we all have struggles in life. Struggles with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, and relationships to name a few. You'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through life recovery. Your host is Steve Arterburn, founder of New Life Ministries and Women of Faith, author of over 100 books, and teaching pastor at Northview Church in Carmel, Indiana, one of the 20 largest churches in America. Steve is the co-editor of the Life Recovery Bible, the number one selling recovery Bible. With over 3 million copies sold, this is the Bible given to inmates by Prison Fellowship and the Pew Bible for the Salvation Army. Now here's Steve. Hi, Steve Arterburn here. Thank you for joining me for Life Recovery Today. We are going to be talking with somebody that's been in recovery since 1981, Audrey Williams. She's a very, very successful real estate management company owner and uh, just a wonder, well, I think she's a successful Christian and uh, somebody that John Townsend, Henry Cloud, and I, we just all used to just bump into each other and be part of each other's lives all the time back in the old days, back in the 80s, as they say. And we'll get with her right after I share with you something that's been on my mind. It comes right out of this new little book. It's the 365-day Life Recovery Prayer Devotional. It's a brand new product that's just out. And uh, Nick Harrison and I did this together. And it will give you some great, uh, a quote that you'll probably want to hang on to throughout the day. A great scripture that, that right now could be the scripture God wants you to read that day. And then a little devotional thought. But one of the things that uh, C.S. Lewis said is that there, there are no ordinary people. You have never met a mere mortal. Well, when you think about it, life is such a rarity in our big universe. Uh, people get excited, or the scientists do, when some place a few million miles away might have um, the elements that could one day produce life. But it's nowhere that we've seen except right here. So to be a human, not just to be alive or have life, but to be a human, even more <laughs> extraordinary. And here's the thing that's so amazing. We can be in a process that leads to transformation. Whatever we were, whatever we've been, we can transform into something brand new. In fact, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, The Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Now, along the way, along the way of recovery, we get stuck. And we, we don't really see ourselves moving closer to God's image. In fact, people might say, man, you were kind of ungodly there. But we can get back on track. It just... It just requires taking us back to the beginning of admitting we have an extreme limitation that we in and of ourselves cannot fix on our own. And God sure can. And then we willingly allow Him to do that. That could be the beginning of a whole new life as an extraordinary human being. We'll be back after this. Are you going through your struggles alone? Do you want someone to talk to to help you through your pain? Do you feel like a failure when you relapse again, telling yourself, next time will be different? Don't walk this path alone anymore. Join a life recovery group today and be a person that your friends and family can be proud of. God created us to be in community and we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country and if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. Life Recovery brings recovery to you, right where you are. You'll take a journey with others to find healing and freedom. Whether you're looking to join a group or start one, New Life Ministries is here for you. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or visit liferecoverytoday.net.
Welcome back to Life Recovery Today. Audrey Williams is my guest today, and I met Audrey oh, probably back in 1980, 1981, somewhere back in there where we were all going to the same church, South Coast Community Church in Southern California. I had just moved out there in 1980, and life has never been the same. Audrey, uh, thanks for joining me here on Life Recovery Today. How you doing? Well, thank you so much for having me. I am doing well, doing well. Those were the days, weren't they? Oh my gosh, it was like, it was magic what Jesus was doing. It really Just was. Life's and, being changed all the time. Yeah, and we were part of a church. It, it just seemed like there couldn't, I mean, for me, uh, I had been a part of so many boring sermons and <laughs> the church we were going to, it was just so wonderful to go to church on a Sunday and there was great music, great sermon. And then all of that just came crashing down. Exactly. And we all kind of had to deal with some kind of trauma. We didn't even know it was traumatic, but it really was. And, and it was for a lot of people. You, you had, uh, that pastor was, well, eventually found out to be unfaithful, but you were in a relationship where, uh, oh my goodness, uh, you found out this guy is unfaithful to you. He's having affairs all over. Is that right? Exactly. Now that was that was before I started going to South Coast. That was one of the motivating factors of, of my pain over the b betrayal. Yeah. And um, and so I found out that not only was I having this relationship with a love and relationship addict, but you know what? I kind of have that tendency myself, a love and relationship addict. And fortunately, over time, I was able to be involved in groups that have helped me to change those behaviors and change that way of thinking. In fact, I don't know if you, you know this, but one day I was in a Christian bookstore and there was a life-size cutout of Steve Arterburn holding his green book called Addicted to Love. And we had been on that uh, a trip, you know, a, a trip to Majuro together. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how do you know what's the matter with me? <laughs> and I bought your book. Yeah. I bought your book. And it said that uh, I shouldn't be reading five romance novels a week. And I was very disappointed. But in time, I actually got over that addiction to the romance novels and the fantasy and the idea that some man was going to make my life full when obviously, now it is a relational situation. It's not just God, it's God and people. But I finally learned that I can't be filled up yeah. just with, with some relationship with another man, especially a sex addict man. Well, you know, um, when you mentioned this little missionary trip that we went on, one of the things that sticks in my mind about that trip was that these people who, um, and it was the Marshall Islands is where we went, and they, they didn't have much, and of course, when you say middle of nowhere, I mean, it was in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but I remember when it came time for the offering, uh, they didn't pass a basket. There was music, and then people would bring whatever tithe or offering they had, and they'd bring it down to the front. And it really was truly worshiping uh, and giving and making something out of giving. That, that never left mm -hmm. me. And I, I just think we, um, we're not quite as generous or celebratory in our worship with tithes and offerings as we saw back there in those wonderful islands. Yes, beautiful people. But you know, you, you have given back a lot and you entered into recovery and there are just so many things that you've done, codependency, relationship. Um, talk about how you got from, okay, this is a bad guy and I'm not going to be with him anymore. You get into church and then how did you find this recovery journey that you've been on because you've stuck with it. I mean, you really are a walking step, you could say. How, how did that happen? Oh, thank you. Well, shortly after I started 
my my spiritual life journey again in 1980 and uh, came into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and immediately signed up for a small women's Bible study. And there were just four of us and we have remained in relationship all these 40 years. But two of them had said they wanted to go to OA, Overeaters Anonymous. And I, I knew that I had a little problem my problem was with sprouted flourless bread, not normally a problem for people, but you know, the serving size was my problem, you know, <laughs> the serving size. So at any rate, I started going to OA with these women and after five years, I decided I needed to deal with the issue of having grown up in an alcoholic home. And so I started going to Christians with Addictions and did that for a number of years and learned about a lot of my behaviors and learned about people blaming their parents for everything. Hmm. Tell me, when, tell me about that. How, I mean, <laughs> you, 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 you did have a really rough childhood then with having. Oh, well, I don't know about rough, but uh -huh. I would say that one of the little stories I tell, I, well, my mother's still alive, so I don't know if this is going to hurt her, but uh, my father died when he was 64. Hmm. He never did tell me he loved me. Oh, wow. We were not that kind of family. There wasn't hugging. There wasn't, I love you. There wasn't any of that. And so there was a point in time when I took John Townsend's advice that I wanted to finish well. My mother's 97. She lives in Ohio. And some number of years ago, probably 25 years ago, I decided this stuff about no hugging and no saying I love you, that's over. We are done with that. And so now every Zoom call, every phone call has an I love you at the end. And that is so healing for me because I never had that. So did I grow up? I, it wasn't, there was no, um, there was not a lot of anger or there was no physical violence, none of that. But there, it was the, it was the lack of love, the lack of affirmation. One of the little tapes that runs in my head is something my father said to me all the time. He would say, oh, Audrey, oh, you stupid kid. Oh, wow. Well, now that's encouraging yeah. to let one know that you can do whatever you want with your life or, you know, you're going to turn out just fine. And so um, having grown up in this alcoholic home, I did the thing that the middle child, as I am, very often does. Generally, um, everybody's got their role. And my role was to get pregnant out of wedlock mm. because that's what one does. Yeah. And so that's what I did. And, and that was, oh, well, that was in 1968. 68. And I, I have a daughter who's whatever that turns out to be, 52. And um, I, I'm, I made an adoption plan. I've been told you don't say you gave someone for adoption, but my daughter, who's a beautiful woman, in, she lives in Florida, and she was adopted into a wonderful family in Columbus, Ohio, that loves, loves, loves her, and we have a relationship, which is not always the case. Oh. We actually went to Israel together with her oh church, That's and so cool. that was just, I mean, to be in Israel for the first time ever with my daughter, sharing those things, it was, you know, oh, as we say in my office, well, that's where God showed up. Yeah. And thank well, you, Jesus. So. Well, we got to go to a break here and we'll, we'll come back and finish this story. But, you know, um, I wish I had that story. Of course, you know, I paid for an abortion and, and I wish I had a daughter that I could go to Israel with or that particular daughter and it's so sad but your story is such a great example of healing and restoration and so often in the real live Christian community we we try to convince people you're gonna to have to suffer for whatever it is you did for all of your life and God has a tremendous blessing for folks he really does wipe the slate clean. You don't need to be worrying about this horrible thing coming down. You need to know that God is rich in mercy and grace. And that's what Audrey experienced with a daughter born out of wedlock. And an adoption plan eventually brought them back together. We'll take a break 
and come back with more life recovery today. It's hard to find a trusted friend when you're in crisis. Someone who's been there and understands, but who also has the training and skill to give you practical help. Family, friends, and churches want to help, but often they're not equipped to care for those dealing with problems like addiction, and pornography, infidelity, anger, or depression. New Life Ministries is here to provide help and hope in life's hardest places. We're not focused on making people feel better. We're focused on helping people do the work that will help them be better. At New Life, we have resources available to help you, like books, DVDs, CDs, workshops, and our network of licensed counselors. If you need help, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and begin your new life today. Welcome back to Life Recovery Today. Steve Arterburn here and Audrey Williams. I'm not going to say old friend because she looks younger than most people that are our age, but we've been around the block a few times and uh, she's my guest here. And Audrey, you, um, you, you talked about um, Christians in Addiction. Was that the name of the first group? Or what was the, it? I started in OA, and then oh, I went to Christians with Addictions. Okay, and you also did Overcomers Outreach. Is that right? No, no. no? I, I, I was with uh, went to Saddleback. Went to, so you were Celebrate Recovery. I was Celebrate Recovery, and okay. that's when I went to a, a Love and Relationship Addiction small group. Okay. In my Celebrate Recovery, and awesome. I did that for whatever five or seven years, and then is when I started at. Mariner's Christ-Centered Codependence Anonymous 12-step meeting in, in Irvine. And that's where I've been going every Wednesday night since 1999. My friends know, don't ask Audrey to go to the movies on Wednesday because she always goes to that meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, I know what really, happens if I don't. <laughs> it's really great to see how you've continued to stay in recovery, working the steps. and. And you're very wise. And I'm just wondering, um, as you think through this whole journey, uh, is there something that stands out to you, uh, some kind of principle or wisdom uh, that just kind of emerges as when somebody gets into recovery, this is something that they're going to experience or something that you experience that maybe you wouldn't read about in a book but it really has been important to you. Is there anything like that that you would point out? Actually, I would, and it's something that, that John, I'm not sure if it was John or Henry, one, or probably both had said, which has to do with the importance of relationship in recovery. You know, my sponsor always said, oh, structure and accountability is the, is the way that we make changes in our behavior. And I'm, I'm thinking of that accountability includes the relational part. So one of the things that John and Henry talked about on all their CDs that I listened to was that when you want to change your life, you need to be in unconditionally loving, non-sexual relationships. Generally, those would be with people of the opposite sex, and that way you will be filled up with that unconditional love. Now, I've been going to these 12-step meetings for years, and well, you know, decades, yeah. but I'd always gone to co-ed meetings, and so this... Women's meeting I started in in 1999 was the first time I had been in an all women's meeting, because I you know I'm a love and relationship addict so you know I would go to my 12 step meetings and flip my hair you know <laughs> and, oh yeah. let's uh, let's okay so I'm now in this meeting with these women and over time I could feel myself being actually filled with this unconditional love of these other women it probably took two years to get to my ankles and then another year to get to my knees. But today, I live in unconditionally loving relationships with a group of amazing women. There, I mean, I've been going to that meeting since 1999, but there are women that have been in that meeting for 16 and 17 years. This meeting's been going on for over 25 years, and there is a lot of recovery. So I go to, to learn from other women who have who have gone through the process of realizing what their characteristics are in codependency 
and have found a way to not behave those ways, to look at life differently, to practice their boundaries, to, to love their simple little lives, which is what my sponsor always taught me to do. We, we, are not, we are not looking for somebody else's life. We're looking for our own life. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it's really common for us to say to other men that, you know, you have this father wound or you have this issue of uh, feeling accepted and loved by uh, men or as a man. And in your um, humanity and frailty, you turn to the female to heal it, and it doesn't. It just messes up the female and your life. But it is in those healthy, same-sex, male-to-male relationships. We say men become men in the company of men. And to hear your story, that it works both ways, really. It's when a woman has either a, a relationship uh, dependency or addiction or sexual addiction, dependency, uh, whatever it is, that we need to find those healthy, healthy women that can put in exactly. to us. That's where the answer really is. Exactly. You know, um, when my daughter, Madeline, uh, sadly, um, my previous wife left when she was 11. And I knew, I mean, I, I was the the parent that kept her, we, you know, we, she lived with me most of the time. And, um, and I knew that there could be this void that you're talking about. And so I brought other women into her life. And I would just challenge anybody that, you know, if you have uh, children that don't have the same sex love and acceptance and affection, that you bring older people into their safe people that could put that in there. Now, Audrey, you have inspired a lot of people to get help. Your life is a life of recovery. What do you think is the biggest barrier to, let's just say a woman, to getting the help that she needs, getting into 12-step recovery that could change everything? What's the barrier? Whew. Now, that was not a question that someone suggested I think about. Well, what do you think it would be? If you, <laughs> well, you know, what, when you know you're... why don't people, they, I think it has to do with not wanting to have a label. There's an idea that 12-step work, oh, that's those, you know, oh, those, those people, oh, those people. Well, you know what? I'm here to say that's all of us. That is all of us. You've, you know, I have a friend who says, I met somebody who wasn't codependent. We were all shocked. Someone who wasn't codependent, <laughs> yeah. someone who didn't need all that approval. I think that the labeling is, is the problem because yeah. it's not as if there isn't pain. It's not as if there isn't hurt. It is not as if there isn't behavior that's causing chaos. It's just, oh, well, I wouldn't want to go to those people. Or I wouldn't want to, to do a program where I don't get to gossip and I don't get to point fingers, and I have to work on myself. Wait, I really like to point fingers and say about these other people. <laughs> and this program is all about, uh, it's me. I'm yeah. the one who has to change. I'm the one who needs the boundaries. So I would say it's probably labels and, and fear, perhaps, mm -hmm. of, of what I might learn about myself. It's real yeah. easy if I'm taking everybody else's inventory, but... You know, that's not what God is asking us to do. Well, it's so wise what you're saying. And, you know, if you can overcome the fear and if you can um, just say, okay, whatever label is going to be there is going to be there because anybody labeling me, they don't really matter. They're not out for my best interest. You know, if you can get into it, then the, the label one day uh, may be totally uh, different human, I mean, totally transformed person. The label might be, wow, you have really grown. That's a, that's a great label. And I think that's characteristic of you. Anything that you want to say before we close out here that might encourage somebody else in the recovery process, Audrey? Well, at, at our um, recovery program at Mariners, we actually talk about step zero, which is something that Anne Lamott, famous Christian writer, and, and other people have written about, that says you have to come to a point where you say, this stuff has to stop. 
And when we get to that place, this has got to stop. Then we're finally ready to take the step to say, I need a new life. I need recovery. I need the changes that I have been told can happen by working a program of recovery. But first we've got to be done with the problem. Well, that's so good. Audrey, thank you so much. You're just a great human being and I, I'm really grateful that I know you. Thanks for contributing uh, to Life Recovery Today and encourage everybody to tell somebody, if you're in Southern California, check out the recovery programs there at Mariner's Church. They're pretty amazing. I'll be back with a final word right after this. Life recovery isn't just about making the courageous choice to give up an addiction or dependency. It's a journey towards health, wholeness, and becoming your very best you. If you need resources to help you in your journey, we can help. There are many life recovery resources that you can do on your own, with a group, or with your church. We have Bibles, workbooks, and devotionals that you can use to work your recovery right where you are. That's the beauty of life recovery. To learn more or to get the Life Recovery Bible or any other life recovery resource, visit liferecoverytoday.net or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Welcome back to Life Recovery Today. I want to read you a quote. It's found in this uh, one-year Life Recovery Prayer Devotional. J.R. Hiller said this, he said, whenever a Christian has fallen and lies in defeat or is a failure, over him bends the Heavenly Father in kindly pity to raise him up and help him to begin again. No matter where we are, what we've done, what we've been through, there is a supernatural God willing to help us to rise up again in a supernatural way and experience life like maybe we don't think we deserve or don't think is possible. So no matter where you are today, I want to tell you, God loves you. God created you. And that rich, merciful God is bending over you in that tragedy or that defeat, wanting to lift you up to something you've never experienced before. I hope you'll take the invitation. And thank you for joining me. For life recovery today and I hope and pray that this is going to be a great week for you and if you need any help it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE we're there all the time thanks for joining us for life recovery today with Stephen Arterburn we hope this program has helped you integrate God's truth and wisdom into your recovery journey this program is brought to you by New Life Ministries and it's your support that keeps this program on the air when you contact us for any reason, be sure to let us know that you watch on NRB. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to liferecoverytoday.net. Please join us again next week for more Life Recovery Today.